some of the Afghan police, apparently they use some of that money to not only hire prostitutes and to buy drugs. And by the way, when I saw that story, I was like, look, they're fighting over in Afghanistan. I'm not going to nitpick whether they had hookers or they bought hookers for other people, what they do with their drugs. Look, I know it's bad, it's bad, etc. But the third branch of it is unacceptable. To recruit, lure in, work with local Afghans, they would arrange to buy ha- uh, these boys to have them perform and then eventually go home with some of those Afghan leaders. Oh, hell no. You can't use United States taxpayer dollars to... I mean, I don't know why this isn't the largest story in the country. Sometimes I read these things and I think, um, you know, are we the one that took the crazy... Why is that not huge? They're using tax dollars to buy young boys, underage boys, pedophilia, to, for their uh, contacts in Afghanistan. That's crazy. So, uh, and the, as I said, this is called a Bachabazi. DynCorp not only did this, but when uh, one of the ministers in Afghanistan uh, complained and said, God, if people in Afghanistan even find out, I'm going to be in massive trouble. That was Interior Minister Hanif Atmar, who eventually was fired, actually. Uh, he goes over, and this is very interesting, to the U.S. and says, hey, you got to stop DynCorp from doing this. This is crazy. One, our guys tell him, we don't have the legal authority. What? We don't have the legal authority to stop DynCorp from either doing this or training the soldiers? They say, no, 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 they have a contract with us to train your soldiers and your police, and we can't interfere with that. What do you mean we can't interfere with that? With the United States government. Well, we can't interfere with a private contractor, you know, which, you know, you can categorize as mercenaries from doing this stuff? Of course we can. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, unless our government has completely been bought which you can make a decent argument for, where we no longer have authority over the corporations. They are the law, uh, overlords, they are the bosses, and we just take their orders, no matter how heinous and ridiculous and absurd and illegal they are. So that's point number one as to how what our reaction was. Point number two was our, our diplomat over there told the Afghan minister, hey, listen, cool it, man. The U.S. press sucks. They probably won't even latch on to this story. Uh, if we make a big deal out of it, they'll have to make a big deal out of it. But if we play it cool, I bet they bury it. And it turns out, of course they did. The Washington Post in July uh, referred to this practice as, quote, questionable management oversight. Really? Yeah, I would call it questionable. But did they even explain it, what it was? No. Here's, their, here's how they explained it. That DynCorp workers had, quote, hired a teenage boy to perform a tribal dance at a company farewell party. No, that's not what happened. They hired a boy to do the tribal practice of having sex with him. That's what they did. This wasn't some like, oh, no big deal. They're just having a, a local dance. And so then the, our diplomat turns around to the Afghan and say, see, our press sucks. You didn't have to worry about a thing. And now we find out through WikiLeaks that, of course, it was far, far worse than that, and that the Washington Post did not report the whole news. And, by the way, in one of the, in a Guardian article about this through WikiLeaks, uh, they said that they have a long tradition of doing this, the Afghans, the Pashtuns in particular, and, of course, not all Pashtuns do it, and as you can see, it's controversial in Afghanistan as well, uh, and that it, this dancing, this activity, quote, sometimes crosses the line into child abuse with Afghans keeping the boys as possessions. Yeah, yeah, that would cross the line when you keep a boy as your possession. And there's been documentaries on this. This is not benign. This is not a normal dance. They're having sex with them. And apparently they're doing it on our dime. <sighs> Look, thank God for WikiLeaks that we're finding out this stuff that uh, our press maybe even knew but didn't even bother covering, and some of which we never found out about before. <sighs> Crazy. Can we please stop it? By the way, is this still going on? I don't know. Can we please stop it? Or when we ask them again, will they be like, oh, I'm sorry. That is not within our purview. DynCorp has taken over the Defense Department, and they will not allow us to regulate this. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, it did cause, eventually, a problem in Afghanistan. Uh, two Afghan policemen and nine other Afghans were arrested. Uh, and the number of people arrested from DynCorp, Oh, no, oh, none? Oh, yeah, that's weird. 
That's really surprising. So that's from that that audio is taken from something back in 2012 or 2014. I can't remember what it was, but it, basically that's still happening today. And with our corrupt government, it's probably gotten to be so bad that it's un even speakable. And that's little boys that they're having sex with little boys, and also they're well they're marrying little girls over there too. Uh, as young as, like, six, I've heard. Maybe younger, I don't know. So that's kind of ridiculous. And they're also taking Christians and marrying them and marrying their daughters or whatever ISIS is. And it's just getting, it's just insanity. But anyway, now I'm going to play a clip, yes, from Alex Jones I know some people get upset when I use clips from Alex Jones because apparently as a Christian I'm not supposed to support anything that he says. But sometimes the content he talks about is truthful. And you can find truth in a lot of things. Even if it's people who you might not agree with, sometimes they do have good points. So I want to use that point. This is not the Alex Jones show, so I'm not here to promote him. I disagree with him, and I think he has some... Uh, he likes to sell things, I'll put it that way. And I, he, t he likes to in antagonize people sometimes, too. But for this point, he's right on. So I just wanted to use this clip, so I'm hoping I'm not going to make a bunch of enemies by playing this. But it's very a very good point. So just listen to this. I've explained this many times from studying history. And all levels of government throughout the last 500 years at least, even goes back more than that in Western Europe, but it, it happens everywhere. For some reason, criminal groups, whether they're drug dealers or thieves or whatever, or pedophiles, they like to get into government positions because they can protect themselves and do whatever they want. They can get away with it because now they have authority, and the, and the people they abuse or kill, uh, you know, it, it's their word against the person with power, so most people are scared to go after the groups with power, and so that's why criminals and psychopaths and sadists all team up together. And so uh, we've had many guests on over the years exposing the fact that a large percentage, I wouldn't say the majority from our studies, but 35, maybe more percent, of Catholic leadership worldwide, Africa, Asia, Latin America, North America, England, it doesn't matter, Australia, they are caught, you get one pedophile in, he moves up through the parish, he then recruits his lovers in, who also like children, and they set up a kingdom. Of course, when I set out studying this 16 years ago, 17 years ago, been on air for more than 14, I only sought after the truth in history books and government documents, and I kept running into police departments that are run by pedophiles, CPS departments that are run by pedophiles, truancy departments that are run by pedophiles, uh, DynCorp filled with pedophiles, the UN filled with pedophiles. I mean, you can just Google or search engine the term UN child slavery rings, UN child sex slaves, UN diplomats, child sex slaves, US diplomats, child sex slaves, UK diplomats, child sex slaves, Russian diplomats, child sex slaves. I mean, you put that term in. Let's do it right now, live on TV and for radio listeners, but we're simulcasting at prisonplanet.tv. Uh, go to, go to Google or whatever search engine you want and type in Dine core child sex trafficking or sex trafficking, and you will get AP Reuters Chicago Tribune. But it, it it comes out here and there, but never becomes a big news cycle on CNN and Fox. Okay, Dine core International. There it is. Dine core Halliburton sex slave scandal won't go away. That's PrisonPlanet.com, and then it has links to the AP. In fact, print me a bunch of those. I know you printed them a few days ago. And we had. Catherine Austin fits on, and, and she sent me emails saying, you didn't know DynCor runs many of the CPS units in the country? And then I went and I found out, my God, I didn't know they were running, in some states, the majority of it, and they've been caught there. 
And I know that it came out that they were running these operations with hundreds of thousands of children and women per year. Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Africa, Middle East, Asia. I mean, it's so huge. And, and my point is this. Why are we only hearing about the Catholic Church? Because from my study, the United Nations, in fact, Google United Nations child sex abuse and, and, and you know, barbecuing children over fires. I mean, folks, you can do the research yourself. It is just unbelievable. And follow through those articles because I want to get AP and Reuters. I don't want to just show our boil down story. People say, oh, that's not prison, you know, prison planet, info wars. Uh, no, I mean, because you guys printed it, uh, what Fitz was on Monday or Tuesday? Monday? Yeah, and, and, and you guys find, found me Reuters, AP, and Chicago Tribune. In fact, that's over in this stack, but the point is, this is real. And yes, the Catholic Church covered this up because it goes right to the top. Uh, Rat Singer, uh, you know, was involved covering this stuff up 30 years ago. That's confirmed. And the, the establishment is in some internal war, blackmailing the Vatican over something. The Vatican's criticizing abortion. They're criticizing wars. They're criticizing Israel. For whatever reason, this is the only group that is being exposed. And you've got a U.S. media, yeah, there's Chicago Tribune, U.S. stalls on human trafficking. Pentagon has yet to ban contractors from using forced labor. And that's literally tens of thousands of slaves in that article from 2005. But you, but you can also search one, a Chicago Tribune, DynCorp, uh, child trafficking, and it'll come up. So, so my issue is, why are they only covering the Catholic Church? And they should be. But they should also be covering the Texas Youth Commission in facilities all over the state where they, where the parking lots would fill up at night with people coming in to have sex with the kids that have been CPS or the kids in juvenile. They even had paid gladiatory fights where they would have them, you know, fight with weapons, uh, for betting. I mean, these are like tr treated like gamecocks or animals. And so that's my issue here is that how many Republican leaders, how many Democratic leaders, Barney Frank was caught repeatedly with underage male prostitutes, 15, 16, 17 years old, out of a Georgetown complex. He didn't get in trouble because he gave a press conference and said, if you don't back off until the FBI to stop now, and it was confirmed it was happening, he said, I'm going to tell you what's really going on. And they shut up instantly. Congressman Foley caught doing this stuff. How many CPS workers, how many times do you see it in the back of the paper where the local Homeland Security head was caught, you know, molesting children? Or flying in airplanes to meet with people that are going to sell them a kid. When I tell you, I mean, you heard Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, head of the Treasury, you know, editor at, at uh, Wall Street Journal, father of Reaganomics, saying, and he wasn't like this five years ago on the show. He's now been educated, saying the greatest evil in history is now in control of our government. The greatest, most sophisticated evil. And so how do these people work together globally? It's a network of perverts. It's a network of pedophiles. And that's just one group of them. Others uh, like to brutalize women savagely, viciously. Uh, when you see movies like Hostel uh, produced... Uh, uh, by Quentin Tarantino, I have seen scores of articles in the Times of London, in, 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 in British papers and in French papers. I, mean, I remember one in Burgundy, France, this woman escaped from a castle that was owned by a, one of the richest people in France. She weighed less than 85 pounds, looked like a concentration camp victim. She got to the local state police office. They went to the castle and found a bunch of dead women in cages, and it was just shut down. Nothing was going to be done. I mean, every day I read about some little girl on her bicycle disappears, and the CIA loads them on planes, DynCorp loads them on, and they just do I mean, This is who does it. And the CPS hunts children. The CPS has bounties on kids that look a certain way. They wait at the city-owned hospitals with poor people who are having blonde-haired, blue-eyed kids. Those can go for five hundred grand. It goes through an adoption agency and goes to the person that wants them. And, of course, these criminals that run things, they then use their own system as a persecution arm against the public. 
Most of the sex offenders in the registries now were caught urinating behind their car. In fact, the president even talked about that with America's Most Wanted individual 